Hi everyone. In these last few months, we received many questions about the tribulation, about the rapture, the end of the age, and the Antichrist. Now, with so much chaos going on in the world, it is normal to start asking questions about these things and to start looking at it. But do not do it out of fear. Do not let fear control you. Because we know 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Now, for many of you, it might feel like everything in the world is just falling apart. But in truth, in reality, it is just falling into place the closer we get to the end times. Many of the things that you see going on around the world is just the signs, the birth pains of the end. Now, I already made a video about the signs, the birth pains of the end times that you can watch after this video. Now, please listen to me. You don't have to fear the future. God has already won and He is in control. God is all-knowing. He is not limited by time like we are. He knows exactly what is going to happen. And He told us what will happen in the future. Isaiah 46 verse 9 says, I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will accomplish all my purpose. Now, one of the things that God already declared to us about the future is the rapture. It's in Scripture and we know that it will take place. And this is what I want to talk about today in this video. And this is a video request. I received a lot of questions on the rapture. Daniel, what is the rapture? When will it take place? How will it happen? And will it happen before or after the tribulation? So in this video, I'm going to answer these questions and more. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it. Now, just very quick, if it's the first time that you're on my channel, my name is Daniel and welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle, where we preach biblical truth in a balanced way. So, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider it and also click that notification bell here so you won't miss any of the future videos. Now, what does the Bible say about the rapture? What is it exactly? Well, the word rapture does not exist in the Bible, but it does talk about it. Let me explain. The word rapture comes from the words caught up. It comes from the Greek word harpazo. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17 says, Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up, Greek word, harpazo, together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. So the rapture basically means that we, Christians, true believers, will be caught up in the air to meet Jesus in the clouds. Now, please don't confuse this with the second coming of Jesus. This is the rapture before Jesus comes to earth a second time. If He comes the second time, He won't meet us in the air. He will stand on the Mount of Olives and bring judgment. Zechariah 14 verse 3, Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as when He fights on a day of battle. On that day, His feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives that lies before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west by a very wide valley, so that one half of the mount shall move northward and the other half southward. So, what exactly is the rapture? What will happen at the rapture? Well, let's take a look at Scripture and let's see what the Bible says about it. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51 Behold, I tell you a mystery. This is not a secret, it's a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. This means instantly, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. It will happen in a twinkling of an eye. That means instantly. So, if you are still alive, 
When Jesus comes to meet us in the clouds and this happens, you won't die. Your physical body will just change instantly into an eternal body. The rapture is not a long process. It will happen instantly. And suddenly, Christians everywhere, gone. A lot of people will know that it was God. And some people, strange theories will come. They will say, no, it was aliens that abducted people. But it will be Jesus coming to get His children, meeting us in the clouds. 1 Thessalonians 4 For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a cry of a command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Wow, just imagine it. Jesus Himself coming, meeting us in the clouds, calling us to be where He is. But now there's a question. Why does Jesus come and get us, the rapture, before His second coming. You see, this is where it gets really interesting. It's because of the tribulation. The tribulation is a time so awful, nothing before it or after it can even compare. Jesus Himself says in Matthew 24 verse 21, For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be. Now this will be a terrible, terrible time for the nation of Israel and for the whole world. The tribulation. But just before it happens, Jesus will come to get His children. He will call us with Him, Harpazo, meeting Him in the air, to be with Him where He is. Why? Because He doesn't want us to go through the tribulation, through all that pain. Now, there are some disagreements about this between Christians. Some say no. The rapture will happen after the tribulation. And some other people say, no, it will happen in the time of the tribulation. Now, listen to me very carefully. If there are some of you here who quarrel about these things, who love to argue with one another, please listen to me carefully. First, we should not give the devil any room here to come between us, to quarrel over opinions. Romans 14 verse 1 says, As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him but not to quarrel over opinions. Now, let's talk about this in love. And let's take a look at what the Bible says about it. Jesus went to prepare a place for us. And at the time of the rapture, He will come to get us to be where He is. Jesus said in John 14 verse 1, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in Me. In My Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. This is amazing. Jesus is preparing a place for us right now. And when He is ready, He will come and get us to be where He is. This is the rapture. Then, when He comes the second time, to earth, we will bring judgment on this sinful world. But right now, we still have time. We have to share the gospel to the ends of the world. Why? Because we are the ambassadors for Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20 says, Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making His appeal through us. I want you to see the bigger picture here. This world is not our home. We are only passing through. We are ambassadors for Christ, sharing the gospel. We are ambassadors in another country, in another world. And there is a huge spiritual war going on behind the scenes. And we are right in it. And at the end, God Himself will come and He will bring His judgment on this sinful fallen world. But before that happens, He will bring His ambassadors home. That is the rapture. The day you became a Christian, you became a citizen of heaven. That 
is your real home. And at the rapture, God is just bringing you home because He doesn't want you to go through the tribulation. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17, Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up, harpazo, together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. And then, just a few verses later, in chapter 5, it says, Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Verse 4, But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. And now, listen to verse 9. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with Him. God's wrath is not for you. God's wrath is for the unbelievers, those who willfully chose the darkness instead of the light. The time of the tribulation is a time where God Himself will pour His wrath on this sinful world, on all unrighteousness. You can read all about it in the book of Revelation. But scripture is clear that His wrath is not meant for His children. Let me read it again. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So I cannot agree with people who say that God will let us go through the tribulation or um, that He will only come and get us after the tribulation. I can't agree with that because that goes against God's Word. He says that we are not destined for wrath. And He says it after He says that He will come and get us. Now listen to this. Revelation 3 verse 10. Because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. So here God promises that He will protect His children from the hour of trial that will come on the whole world. This is the tribulation. The Greek word that's used here is ak, which means out of. Now, He's not just saying, I will keep you from the trial. He is saying, I will keep you from the hour of the trial. This means the whole time of the tribulation. Now think about this. Think about God's character. It is not His character that He would want you to go through this wrath of His, the tribulation, because you are His child and He already justified you. This is the same God that spared Noah from the flood and Lot from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. That is who God is. Do you really think that God who is love would want you to go through His wrath that is meant for unrighteousness? He already declared you as righteous. Do you really think that He would want you to go through the wrath that is meant for this sinful, dark, evil world? No. Listen to this. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 9. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Listen to this. And to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Here, the Bible clearly says to wait for Jesus, who will deliver us from, from what? From the wrath to come, the tribulation. Now, a lot of people don't understand the, the whole timeline, uh, what will exactly happen in the end times. Let me quickly explain it to you in a simple way. First, Jesus comes down from heaven to take us with Him at the rapture. Second, Jesus brings down His judgment on the earth, the time of the tribulation. Third, Jesus is victorious and we rule over the world for 1,000 years with Him, while the devil is sealed in the pit. Number four, the devil will be released and he will have a final war against God. Number five, God deals with the devil a final time. He throws him in the lake of fire for all eternity to be tormented. Six, the great final judgment will take place. And lastly, number seven, we will live with God forever as His children in the new earth and the new heaven. Are you ready for all of this? 
I sure am. I can't wait to meet Jesus and also to see my father, my, all my grandparents, my, my two brothers. Are you ready? The rapture is just the start. If you are a real child of God, you won't be afraid. You will actually look forward to it with a smile, with a, with a joy in your heart. And if you are not a real child of God, if you're uncertain that you are saved, then please watch this video here and I'll see you there. And always remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee.